All right, so music literature is a course that covers common practice period literature. And so we're going to be looking at 30 or so masterpieces from the Baroque, Classical, and Romantic eras. Um, so one of the important things for you to do is to start to listen to the examples that we're going to cover in class. If you'll look at the syllabus on the top of the page, I've got my email and my office phone number. Um, also, there is a website that you should go to and start to kind of click around on that. Um, one of the first things you should do is to download the listening examples from that website. So when you go to the website, you will see some tabs at the top and uh, click on listening examples. The first two CDs um, cover the symphonies that we're going to be talking about. And so we'll actually cover five different symphonies from the classical and romantic eras. Um, also, on that website, you will see a tab that says Theme Sheets. So what I want you to do for Tuesday is to click on that um, Theme Sheet and print off the one that is on the symphony. We'll talk about um, the basic form that developed in the classical period that's one of the most important forms, which is sonata allegro <coughs> form. So on that theme sheet, you'll see an example um, that is um, a little sonatina, and we'll use that as a work to, to look at in class as an example of sonata allegro form. So go ahead and print that off and bring that to class, okay, for Tuesday is that um, theme sheet on, on the symphony. So the course is divided into four sections. And the first section covers the symphony. The second section co uh, covers the concerto. The third section covers chamber music. And then the last section covers Lieder, uh, which is German art song uh, from the 19th century. And then um, some keyboard literature. So there will be four tests, and each test is worth 200 points. The 90% is an A, and so forth. Um, there is no extra credit. One of the things that's really important is that you come to class on time, so attendance is required. You can miss two classes, um, and it won't affect anything. Um, you're responsible for getting a copy of the class notes. Um, the things that I write on the board, uh, you should write in your notes. You know, that's for sure things to study. And um, if you want to make an A in the class, you can't have more than two unexcused absences. So I'll take a roll at the very beginning of class. And if you come in late, and I've already started the lecture, then you're considered absent. Let me know, though, you know, what's going on, if you have uh, some kind of emergency or if you're going on a, you know, university uh, trip uh, that's sponsored by the university, then that's uh, excused, you know, if you're ill. But let me know before class that, you know, what's happening. Kind of keep up with that. So the works that we're going to be examining are works that are from the common practice period. So that's the first thing that we'll do, is talk about this era of music. And basically, common practice period is music that's using the, um, the type of theory that you are uh, studying in, in music analysis one, two, and three. And so this is something that developed around 1600. So that's a really important date to have in mind. And around 1600, a type of uh, genre arose uh, called opera. 
And associated with opera was a style of writing that was a type of homophonic texture. And so we'll be talking about you know, certain terminology that you need to be able to use. One of the things that we'll try to develop in the course is the ability to describe musical style. And so when we get to the second exam, I will give you an example that is something similar to what we studied in the class, but isn't something that we studied. And so I'll have you write an essay about who a possible composer and what particular style that could represent. And so you want to be able to use the terminology that we talk about in class. Um, I see some of you have the, uh, the textbook, and that text is the Enjoyment of Music, and it's the 10th edition, the shorter version of it. If you look on your course outline, you'll see in parentheses reading assignments. And so th these units one and two that are described as materials of music is, for the most part, it's going to be reviewed for you. You will have already, uh, you know, be familiar with a lot of this. But go ahead and read through that, and then also read chapters 28 through 31 and chapter 34. I like the textbook because it's very easy to read. It's not um, real thick. It um, is clear, and um, it has some really good uh, general descriptions of musical style. And so that's what uh, you'll be reading about for, for Tuesday, is the classical style, and uh, specifically the symphony, which arose at the beginning of the classical period. So it's, uh, it's a type of genre that, that wasn't present in the Baroque. So just kind of keep this as your, your basic um, assignment for readings. And this also has all the names of the, of the works that we're going to cover that are on the, um, the CDs that you'll download from the listening examples on the web page. So 1600 had a type of music arise called opera. And this featured a monodic texture. And this is something which um, has a, a single melody line, so it's a type of homophonic texture. So I'll write here these different terms for texture. So homophonic is a texture that features a single melody plus chords, plus harmonic accompaniment. So this monotic texture was a type of homophonic texture that featured a figured bass notation. So this is something when, you know, in, in theory that you study that type of notation that indicates the intervals that sound above a bass line. And so that in itself was something that identified the structure of the triad as a basic harmonic element. And that was the beginning of um, then composers thinking in terms of chord progressions because Composers had thought more in terms of just the intervals at which voices would intersect and, and what intervals were created rather than thinking of vertical construction of chords. So, monotic texture is voice plus figured bass. So, the reason I'm saying this is because this era. which began around 1600, lasted for about 300 years. And all of the composers that were writing music in, in the common practice period were viewing music in the same way as far as the, the way that um, triads and seventh chords would progress. 
and composers began to write in just either a major key or a minor key. And so sometimes this is called you know, the major minor system, sometimes it's called tonality, sometimes it's called like tertian harmony. So all of these terms describe this basic um, you know, theory that you're, you're studying in, in uh, freshman sophomore theory. So we'll put here So that term tertian harmony refers to the type of harmony that is viewing chords built with the interval of a third. So triads and seventh chords. As you get into the 19th century, they start to extend that to add an extra third on top. So you have ninth chords and eleventh chords and so forth. All right, so this uses until the 20th century. With the beginning of the 20th century, then um, we start to see a rejection of the idea of tonality. And um, by the 1920s, then with uh, Arnold Schoenberg, then you start to have systems that do away with the idea of tonic, where all 12 tones are treated equally. So the first half of the common practice period is the era that's known as the Baroque. And the two composers that we're going to study from the Baroque era are Archangelo Corelli. The dates of his life were 1653 to 1713. We'll look at Corelli in the section on chamber music. Corelli was a really important composer, especially for strings. And so we'll look at a couple of trio sonatas that Corelli wrote. And then the other composer that we'll look at is the most important composer from the Baroque era, Johann Sebastian Bach. The dates of Bach's life are 1685 to 1750. And so Bach is seen as the composer who was the culminator of the Baroque style. He was the one who wrote the greatest masterpieces in all the different genres that had arisen in, in the Baroque period. So really this, this uh, was a time of change in the 17th century. And so you see new genres that are, that are uh, being developed um, in the rise of instrumental music. So the music that was earlier uh, from the Renaissance was primarily vocal music. And so with the Baroque, then you start to see an interest in composers writing music for specific combinations of instruments or even for solo instruments. All right. So next era is the classical, the classical period. And the classical period also starts with um, an emphasis on homophonic textures. What happened in the Baroque period with the advent of opera is that composers had rejected the Renaissance polyphony. And so this term, polyphony, or polyphonic, let me use that since I said homophonic. Polyphonic music is music that has two or more equal melodies that are woven together in a musically satisfying way. So it's multiple voices, multiple equal melodic voices.
So by the middle of the Baroque era and then in the mature Baroque era and with the music of Bach, then there's a reinfusion of, of polyphony. And so um, Bach's music is extremely, you know, great example of, of polyphonic writing. And so he was the great master of the fugue, which is one of the most important types of polyphonic um, forms. But we see the same thing happening at the beginning of the classical era as composers are writing polyphonic music, it's, it's a more complex texture because you have more going on melodically. And the beginning of the Baroque was an, an era that rejected the idea of multiple voices expressing a text because it was something that made it harder to understand exactly what was being presented in, in the words. And so this idea of monody was something that was viewing music as something that would be used to express the meaning of the text very clearly, and that you would um, compose a single melody that expressed all the emotions of the text. So a similar thing happened at the beginning of the classical period um, in that the style changed and it was something which was associated with um, being easily accessible to the listener. So not something that would be complicated, but instead something which would um, delight and please the listener. So the classical era then was really centered around one city in Europe, and that's the city of Vienna. And so there are four Viennese classical composers who are at the very top of um, the composers of this era. So we'll put here I think what I'll put here is Viennese classicism. It's just a general term to describe the uh, music of Haydn, Mozart, Beethoven, and Schubert. So, so Haydn lived uh, 1732 to 1809. Haydn is sometimes described as the father of the symphony. He wrote over 104 symphonies. We're still trying to determine exactly how many he wrote, and there's still works that are being discussed as whether or not they're authentic Haydn works. But um, he was someone who gave lessons to Beethoven. Um, he was someone who knew Mozart, who made the statement that Mozart is the greatest composer that I know. Um, but he's really, really important in uh, the development of, of the symphony and of sonata cycle works. So Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart is the first composer that we're going to look at. Uh, we will be um, listening to the, the symphony number 38 that's nicknamed the Prague Symphony. So you should go ahead and start to listen to that. Um, on the website, there are scores that I have um, uploaded that are from the MSLIP website that are public domain scores. And so you can open up two windows of the website and have one that has the score and then have um, the other that would play you know, the example. And so it's a, a good thing to listen with the score because you, you'll learn to follow um, these complex scores and how to move your eyes across and you know, know exactly how things are arranged as far as the instrumentation and, and so forth. So. Um, that's something to you know be familiar with is, is uh, how how to follow the score. But Mozart, is known as you know one of the great geniuses of, of Western European art music. Um, he was especially um, brilliant with his operas, 